This story is not only interesting, it's also terrifying. But in the same sense, it's also glorious because it reminds us as Christians that our religion isn't just about works. It's supernatural. Our God actually changes us and gives us new natures. That's a glorious thing. Here we have Matthew Gretsch, who's a conservative Christian and former homosexual. Matthew was facing serious prison time, not for committing a crime, but for simply sharing his testimony. Now, you may have recently heard of the anti-conversion therapy laws that have been passed recently. Now, these laws attempt to prevent Christians from sharing any message, i.e. the gospel, that would attempt to change the mind of a minor who's being encouraged to change their identity. And in countries where this law is prevalent, and in this case, that would be Malta, just sharing your testimony of how you used to be a homosexual has now become criminal. We can't even share our testimony anymore, okay, in certain parts of the world. But praise God when we see things like this because it reminds us that what we believe is true. To go through this process, right, or to try to step away, like you have chosen to step away, right? Absolutely, yes, but they seem to be equating the preaching of a different point of view with imposition and forcing, which is very dangerous because it leaves no room for expression and, and, and uh, you know, other viewpoints. So, um, yeah, basically, you know, if you're found to be performing uh, uh, forced conversion practices on people, you're liable to 5,000, up to 5,000 euros of a fine or else up to five months of imprisonment. Um, uh, and so it's uh, really bizarre. And it also criminalizes professionals who offer uh, so-called conversion practices. Um, so yeah, it's intense. So, okay. So that's really helpful because you do this interview and you probably assumed I did an interview. My interview's done. I can carry on with my life now. And then suddenly the police are knocking on your door essentially. So what, what happens next? Yeah. So it's, uh, I wasn't expecting it because I've, I shared my story several times in Malta, including on X Factor Malta. So uh, that was a, a, a huge step for me and it was very controversial in my country and, and internationally. But um, this time the police uh, give me a call and they say, you know, three people reported you to the police and reported the presenters as well, because they're claiming that you breached Chapter 567 of Maltese Law, which says, you know, that you cannot advertise so-called conversion practices. And so I turned up to the police station with my lawyer. We exercised our right to be silent. Um, but a few days later, uh, the police inspector decided to press charges against myself and the uh, television uh, presenters. So we literally you know, had our first hearing in February this year, which was a few months after all of this happened. And um, we're in a criminal court case for the first time, at least for myself, I'm going to speak for myself. It's the first time in my life I have to face a criminal court for, uh, for simply sharing my Christian faith. That's what it is, you know, sharing the hope that we have and sharing the reasoning behind what we believe. I mean, what is so dangerous about sharing your story? People can disagree. They can say they don't think that you did the right thing or that it's it's possible to walk away, that you should walk away. They could say whatever they want, but but I think the step that a lot of people are, are struggling to understand is how you go from disagreeing with what you said to criminalizing it. So just to clarify, because you mentioned what the penalties are under this particular law, what do you face if you are found guilty of this what is your worst case scenario legally? Yeah, so so the worst case scenario is that um, I would go to prison for five months, or you know that I would uh, face a, a, a five thousand euro fine in Malta, and um, you know what could happen as well is that if we win it, that the police will choose to appeal it, and it will just go on for longer than we expect. Um, so. I think it's very intimidating towards Christians because I think it's, it can discourage people from exploring the subject, even journalists who would want to hear a different point of view. You know, th this is creating a lot of stigma and intimidation in society. It's, it's terrible. It should, these laws should have no place in any nation. Well, is persecution coming and, and how do we prepare for that? Well, first of all, we never know what's going to happen. Uh, we can say that if things continue in the trend that they're going right now, persecution is quite likely. Now, 
there's there's a type of socialism in Europe, um, and and there's not a lot of persecution of Christians, hardly any. But but here's the reason: the the church is so weak in Europe that it's just ignored. There's no reason to, it's it's not a danger to anybody. They're just considered irrelevant. The worst thing that could happen to us is we become the same way. That we become so irrelevant to what's going on in society that there's no need to even deal with us. Um, another thing that's very important is God prepares His people whenever they're going to enter into a time of crisis. I don't think that we need to do some exceptional preparing. I just think we need to be biblical about our daily preparation that we all need, whether there's persecution or not. I believe it was John Wesley, they asked him, what would you do if you knew the Lord was coming back this evening? He said, well, I'd get up in the morning early, as always. I'd have my prayers, my devotional, tea, breakfast, go out and preach, come back as I always do every day, have time of prayer, rest, go out and preach, come back... And, and the point that he was making, although I'm, I didn't quote him exactly, please understand that, the point that he's making is, I'm living in the will of God. There's no need for me to change anything. And that's the way we need to be. We need to be preparing and living in the will of God every day, growing in our faith, growing in our knowledge of the Word, growing in our ability to defend our faith and give a reason for the hope that's within us striving for godliness, disciplining ourselves for godliness, just keep living like, uh, like, like we are. And constantly seeking the Lord for clear direction. Lord, what do you want me to do? I have to admit that with these change of events, that I am uh, really earnestly seeking the Lord. Lord, what do you want me to do? How... Then shall I live? What would, would you want me to do something different? Uh, different emphasis in the ministry. What, what do you want? And so, brothers, don't be surprised if, if the dark days... First of all, I, I, I've got one thing I'd like to recommend. Don't listen to a lot of talk radio. Don't listen to a lot of Christian talk radio, please. You're going to get so scared, you're going to you know, do a Y2K thing on us or something. Start <laughs> hoarding food and you know, go live in Alaska or something. I don't know. I mean, don't, don't do that. Read scriptures. Continue on. Grow in godliness. And, and be hopeful and positive. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, after all, maybe the post-millennialists are right. <laughs> you know, uh, we, we don't know. We know that He reigns. 